Sure. Okay, so the Texas order that Governor Abbott is still fighting to enact would call on both licensed professionals and members of the general public to report parents of transgender children as child abusers if those children had received gender-affirming care. Not only that... This, this is, like, so insane. Yeah, that, yeah that's pretty cool. This, you know... Oh, my... It's gonna be... Is there... I mean, anyone who's giving their kid... Gender affirming care is going to have to move out of state. There's just no way that's going to happen. It, this was, this was, you know, it, it, this is really stupid too, because the right was kind of winning on the, um, you know, this, the publicity front. Right. And uh, I think convincing people that they were sort of in the more sane camp. And then, and then, and then Abbott's like, fuck this shit. It, the way this reads to me, I think. I think Abbott really wants to be president. Like this. Really? Sentence. Yes. I think that's what's happening here. This is not an op a good opening salvo for No, no, no. Yeah, he wants to be president. He wants to be president like DeSantis. But I think DeSantis is way more intelligent and adept and adept at doing these sorts of things. And Abbott's kind of just like the guy who wanders in with like a sledgehammer and starts, you know, smacking shit around. He's like, he's like, let me into your club, guys. I want to be part of it too. And you're like, oh god, it's fucking Greg. He did it completely incorrectly. Yeah, Santos is like, oh, Greg fucked it up again. Holy right, shit! Right? Yeah, this is not a not a good look, Greg. But Greg, okay. Greg might be in the conservative bubble. I don't think DeSantis I'm is sure in is. the conservative sure bubble. I think he realizes how what mm -hmm. he does looks to moderates. Which um, I yeah, think presidential presidential elections are won and lost by how the moderates vote. So Of course, of course. Yeah. But the order came as part of a letter from Abbott to the Department of Family and Protective Services in which he asked the department to conduct a prompt and thorough investigation into the families of any minors undergoing elective procedures for transition. Now, we've already done a whole episode on the way anti-trans advocates. Now, I will say I, I read the letter. It's actually it's actually very interesting because. It's actually very sneaky. <laughs> this is very clever, even though I think this is ultimately a very dumb move. The way they justify this is that apparently um, Medicare and Medicaid hasn't made a national ruling on whether there's a blanket, um, whether they'll blanketly pay for any gender affirming care. Interesting. And so it's basically what they do in Texas is that they rely on all the research that the national Medicare people figured out, which is very interesting. If you, if you click on the letter, you can click on the links and you can get to, there's like all this research that they did that the Medicare people did that shows that they have sort of a, they say that it's kind of inconclusive whether uh, gender affirming care is right for everyone essentially. Wow. That's what they say, which that's useful information. However, it's somewhat dishonest for Texas to kind of levy it the way they're doing it because the Medicare people don't say no one should get this treatment. They just say, oh, we can't make a blanket assessment whether everyone should you know, get gender affirming care. So it's going to be done on a case by case basis. Right. Which is the way you want it to be yeah you're, yes. you're worried about false positives false positives right. are the problem and if you can't right. assess that's you have to dig into the situation to assess right i mean my problem with the affirmative model is i just you, if you just blanketly affirm you're gonna get more false positives you have to put some pressure so that you know that the person is having serious issues, right? Uh, and also, well, you have to dig in to figure out if the issues are un are unrelated to some sort of gender dysphoria, right? And it's completely BS because, you know, it's it's the gender activists that make these insane arguments about how gender is like this impossible to describe nebulous concept. You know, you had the Doctor Phil. You know, how do you define a woman? Well, I can't answer that question. You have to ask a woman that question, right? <laughs> like, and yet they think 
so it, so they, they're making these kind of like hypocritical arguments because on one hand they think gender is like impossible to describe or this this very vague thing. On the other hand, they're arguing that children should magically be able to understand if they have gender dysphoria themselves right. without seeking, you know, a doctor. And that's, and as you said, the whole point of this is that uh, a child or an adult is supposed to go to a doctor or a psychologist or a psychiatrist. And the psychologist and psychiatrist is supposed to try to get to the bottom right. of whatever their issues are to see do you actually have gender dysphoria? Maybe you're just depressed about something else. Maybe you're just anxious about something else. Maybe you have some completely different problem. And that's it, this is what's so insane about this. And this is why it's so dangerous to categorize this stuff as an identity, as opposed to a medical condition or mental illness. Because if you go to a doctor and you have a problem, the doctor's job is to figure out what your problem is and then treat it, okay? That's the way this should be looked at. You have a problem or you think you have a problem, the doctor tries to figure out what it is and then treats it. It's not about affirming your fucking identity. Right. That's the completely, that's the ass backwards way of conceptualizing all of this. Yeah, it's bad news. Right. It's completely bad news. It's like building an identity around being, having cancer. Yes, exactly. Exactly. They will call that offensive, though. How dare you compare being trans to trans people can live normal lives. But the, yeah, but that's the point. And that's why I said in the beginning of the stream, your sexual orientation and your gender identity should be the least interesting part about you. Right. That should not be the basis of your personality. <laughs> people disagree. That's the problem. You have a bunch of boring losers who don't have anything going for them. So they want to use their gender identity as a crutch to make themselves interesting. Total istophobe. Right. Get a hobby. No, you okay? are the istophobe. Get, listen, get a hobby. Uh, you know, get some interesting things to go be interested in. You know, construct a personality for yourself so you can have a conversation with someone about something outside of gender identity. I mean, I don't. I got to admit when I, I mean, there was a time in my life when girls was the thing I was most interested in. So I just, no, there's a difference. There's a difference. Yeah. But wait a minute. There's a difference between you being interested in having sex. Okay. Right. And you saying, well, me being a straight male is the most interesting aspect of my personality. Okay. Good. I'm glad. Oh, thank you. You understand yes, like okay. there's a huge yeah. difference there. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm glad we made that distinction. Yes. Okay. Let's use the what about the children narrative to obfuscate their puritanical conservative attitudes towards gender and sexuality. And we would probably make a whole other video about other ways that transphobic ideology is wrong and bad. In fact, make. See, Aaron, the fact that you and I and anyone cares about false positives in children, that's just fake. Transphobia, it is. I know. That's just transphobia. That's, that's yeah. to mask up our our secret intrinsic transphobic beliefs. Right. Yeah. Moa. Dishonest. All right. But it bears worth repeating here. Puberty blockers are broadly reversible and cause no meaningful harm. What's broadly? more gender affirming <laughs> care, <laughs> including you. puberty blockers? Is We're like, <laughs> let's, how can he just lie? How can mm -hmm. he just lie? Just I lie know. in your face right there. I know. I know. Yeah, that's pretty well, bad. Uh, well, wasn't what you know? One of the other problems with the Texas thing too is that the the studies that the National Medicare people were looking at, I don't think any of them were really about puberty blockers. They were all about surgery, or mostly about surgeries. I think. Okay. So, puberty blockers Stop. need to be studied. I just I can't imagine. Yes. Like even in cases, and he brings it up in here, of precocious puberty, where they yep. use puberty blockers. So I guess the kid isn't developing earlier than all of their classmates. Who the fuck cares? Well, I don't like. I don't understand. Well, no, it has it has negative, you know, health effects, which is why they do. It's not just that you're developing quicker. Oh, really? Yeah, but the. 
Well, there's an issue here, and I hate this because we, we hear we hear activists say this dumb shit all the time. Pretty blockers have no negative side effects and can all, you know, can be yeah. reversed. He whatever. said okay, broadly, for, we're making progress. Broadly, though. yeah, right. Broadly reversible. Yeah, for that, that broadly is doing a lot of heavy lifting. Here. Yes. Okay. That, none of that's true. And that's not how any of this works. Th what works or the way this actually is, if you talk to like a doctor who's not being like lying to you about this. No, some doctors might lie to you about this. Or maybe you have been ideologically captured. This is, this is the reason so much of the conversation about this is kind of screwed up because the suicide rate for kids and people with gender dysphoria is so high or is potentially so high. Like it depends on what, what your polling is. And there's another problem. The polling on this is kind of whacked because some polls say that, you know, the suicide rate for people with gender dysphoria is anywhere from like 14% to 50% which is like a huge fucking- like, That's a giant difference right there. It's a really big difference. Okay. And, uh, and when I say suicide rate, I mean suicide attempted rate, not success rate. Um, so this, that's the problem because the way that you look at all of medicine, of all medicines, of all treatments, is that there's very few medicines or, sur or surgeries or treatments you can get that have zero risk. They're like there's so few that have zero risk. Generally, it's like, well, if you have this medical condition, you have like an 80% chance that you're going to get this sickness. Now we can give you this drug and this drug has like a, you know, a 95% chance to fix your illness, but it also has a 5% chance to cause some bad side effect. And so you have to make sort of this cost benefit analysis in your mind where you say, well, would you rather take the 5% chance of having the bad medical side effect from the medicine? Or do you want to have the 80% chance that whatever your illness is, is going to fucking kill you? Yeah. Right. That's how, gamble. Right. That's how all medicine works. And so the problem with the discourse around transgender uh, treatments is that since the suicide rate could be, depending on the poll, like 50%, something so high, since that 50% number or even the 25% number is such a high bar that it makes everything like seem possible, like feasible. So you could say like, oh, well, if you're on puberty blockers for your, for your entire life, because the thing is that with like, I think you have to be on puberty blockers forever or you have to take cross sex harm. Like, I don't think if you never go through puberty, I'm not sure if, I don't know about this. I don't, but I, I'm not sure you can just like stop taking puberty blockers when you reach 25 and your body will stop trying to make you go through puberty or something. You, I don't, don't know how I thought works. you go through puberty at 25. <laughs> no, if you stop taking the puberty blockers at 25, you go through Oh, yeah, puberty. yeah, that's what I mean. I, yeah. I'm saying I don't think this... I think if you start taking puberty blockers as a kid, I think you have to take them forever. I'm not sure there's a Well, you don't block you puberty forever. Them. You can delay it, but only for so long, I'm assuming. You can't go... I don't know. You can't be I like 45 know. and... Like, Maybe not. I have never been through puberty. <laughs> I don't know. We I don't know if there's long term studies nah, on any of this stuff. That can't happen. Well, that we'll seems, see. But that seems insane. Right. It does. It does. But what I'm but what I'm getting at is like if the suicide attempt rate is like fifty percent or something that high, then what they'll say is, well, you know, the puberty blockers, you know, they have a twenty five percent chance of causing heart disease or, you know, or depression or some other effect. But it's still beneficial because the, you know, the cost benefit is versus 50% suicide, right? 